desk or somewhere else. Wow, what a scene. And Steve Krupe, maybe you can tell us how the heck did they bring the fireworks up from the ashes? I've never seen that done in my life anywhere. That was just absolutely amazing. The Grucci family of New York City, they've done many implosions before. And uh, believe me, they went to town on this one. And uh, th there was that moment where everything went dark and then the jet fuel, many of the floors in the building were just packed with jet fuel. Those fireballs started going off and then section by section the building came down and from the ashes it was pretty pretty, very pretty to see those uh, fireworks going up. High above us right now is Mark Martinez. He's in Live Chopper 13. Mark, quite Steve, a view from up there. Oh, what a view. Uh, talk about a weird experience having fireworks explode at about your eye level. That was amazing. We'll take a look down at the ground right now. You see that uh, dust cloud is starting to, to fade away pretty quickly. It's moving to the southeast, as Kim Sherwood told us. But, Steve, it looks like you didn't come out of that unscathed. Unlike the people who were down there, uh, blocked off in front of the Luxor, it looks like they came out of it pretty well. They didn't get too much of that dust cloud as we thought they would. But what an implosion this was. It surely uh, is going to go down in the record books as one of the most a amazing explosion, implosions rather ever, and that fireworks show was just phenomenal. So, so what, what, a, what a view that was. As you see here, that dust cloud on the ground still hanging around there, as you can see by the lights. You can see the haze down there. It's a bit hard for us to tell up here. We have, we have so many, uh, so many uh, clouds up here from the fireworks that are s sort of hanging around. So. But uh, this is the first time we've actually seen some of the clouds up here, unlike the other implosions. So as you say, one of the biggest dust clouds, Steve. A very impressive show. All right, that's the view from Live Chopper 13. The crowd is still milling around. They've opened up the street, and folks are walking out here behind me. Maybe you can take a look down onto the street level. It's still a very thick cloud of dust out there, but folks going out and scraping up the last few remnants of the Hacienda. Of course, we had cameras all over the place. This was one of our views. 1,100 pounds of dynamite, untold gallons of jet fuel creating the fire, the walls of fire that erupted from the building. And the noise was deafening before we felt the dynamite go off. You can feel it in your gut, but this one, the charges just kept going off one after another, one after another, and then the fireworks. Quite a show. Implosion number five in Las Vegas, and it ranks right up there at the top. Of course, we had cameras just about everywhere around this implosion including this one called Blast Cam. Our camera actually on the property and the intense fireballs oh, virtually obliterating the shot there momentarily, but it survived. Watch this, watch as the wall of flame, the jet fuel ignites inside the building and then section by section, those pieces came down. This is one of the best views possible. Wow. And this was the view from the top of the Tropicana. You could see the end of the fireworks there, and then the building went completely dark. We could hardly find the building with our camera. And then, that's when the charges went off. Section by section, window by window, Buildings seem to be engulfed by those flames. And down it all went. And then this, this, our exclusive camera mounted on the second floor. This we called our collapse cam. You could see as the charges went off on the bottom, the building hung there, and then 
Slammed down on top of our camera. It looks like it's alive there for a while. Chunks of the building actually sticking to the outer portion of our lens. But it's, it's still not over though. The building continued to fall. Wow, what an event it was. Look at that, all right. The crowd continues to mill around, and Mark Martinez has the view from Live Chopper 13. Mark. Well, Steve, uh, the crowd immediately after this implosion started to head out, and that's causing a lot of troubles on the roads. Let's give you a look right now. This is Industrial and I-15. Things are moving along very, very slowly right now. They just opened the I-15 a few moments ago after they swept the freeway to make sure there was no debris on there and safe for vehicles to travel on. They opened it up, but now industrial is just packed as people are leaving these fields, these uh, side roads that they were parked on, and uh, they are just really uh, heavy right now. We can imagine that uh, it's going to be this way all over town. Now, we're going to go back to you, Steve, and uh, hopefully you can see down there that the people are starting to, to leave as well, and I guess that's causing some troubles down where you are. Indeed. Mark, the people remain out here, and unbelievably, a section of the building still remains. Only just now, as the dust has cleared, can we see out there in the middle of the blackness a section of the hacienda still standing. It's leaning slightly to the side. I'm not quite sure how they're going to resolve that situation. But we couldn't see it. It was so dark out here, and the cloud so thick, so intense that that piece of the building remains standing. So that is a new twist, making uh, implosion number five even more special in a little different way. Let's send it right back uh, to uh, Mark Sayer and Allison McCarthy, who are in the studio free of this uh, giant dust cloud. My goodness, what a mess it was out here. Well, that is a tremendous twist to the end of this. I think that's what you call a glitch. Of the building still standing, perhaps implosion number six. I don't know how they're <laughs> gonna how they're gonna get in there uh, know, if it is leaning. I'll take a structural look at that. Right. Okay. Well, we do have another angle of the implosion. We call this chopper implosion, I believe. So let's take a look at this viewpoint. This is the picture from Live Chopper 13 at the moment of the implosion. And we recognize this is a lot like the, the Dunes North Tower, for those of you who watched that on television. Because of all the fireworks that we had, it created a cloud of smoke before the actual implosion. And we realized that it made it slightly more difficult for you to actually see the implosion itself. This is perhaps one of the best views that we've that had we of the actual building going down. There you can see the no. right-hand side of the building uh, going down, and as we know, part of it did not go down. So okay. we, uh, all of our crews are going to remain on the scene. We're going to be back here at 11 o'clock, and we are going to be talking with uh, just about everybody who's out there. We're going to show you these angles again, and we're also going to get to the bottom of what's going to happen with the final portion of the building. That's our News 13 special report. Thanks for joining us. We will see you back here, we hope, at 11 o'clock.